I want to read to you what I wrote in the book mm -hmm. when I was 23. I'd like to make the book, cost it, study the marketing techniques, and maybe even suggest some alternatives. Mm -hmm. It's all good, uh, only one mistake, uh, you don't need marketing techniques. <laughs> yes. Forget about it. <clears throat> if you, uh, if this is a question in the beginning, it gets all wrong. Really? Yeah. But we have to find other ways to position the book, no? No. No? You have to make the book uh, very honest. Mm -hmm. And as uh, I'm always saying, play like a child in the same yeah. box and make something without thinking if it sells or if it will be successful or whatever. Only if it is totally innocent what you are doing, it will work. When you started with the concertinas, was it uh, an active decision to put aside the traditional book? No, it was just a easier way to make the book for me, my, for myself. I was just The original cutting, maquette? Yeah, I was just cutting the contact sheets, my medium format contact mm -hmm. sheets and pasting them and giving them to friends. Mm -hmm. So I never thought anybody would want to publish them. But then I gave one to Gerhard from our Calcutta trip. 2006. Yeah. And that's when it started. When you did this maquette, when you had been 23, there were no other options. So yeah. there was no laptop, there was no computer. Yeah. You had just your photos, you made them in the dark room and you glued it in. Yeah. To, uh, uh, um, uh, notebook or whatever yeah. it was and you had written the text mm -hmm. and uh, you studied and made your thoughts how it should be produced if you find a publisher about type form and this and that and there are many questions in the market where, which are very interesting and uh, then it was sitting there endless because you could not find a publisher so by today nobody is doing any more a market because it's all digital and there's something going wrong. That to me is the big tragedy of bookmaking now that people will not make physical maquettes, that they do it all on the computer and make a digital copy and that's the first time they're handling the material. And here I think what I have learned so much from you and I try to teach people who want to listen, the importance of your scissors and actually cutting the prints and pasting them, that process is so important to me that I like to call that process book building and I like to suggest it to people as a way of dealing with photography, not just making books. Book building is the right word because I always uh, have the saying that uh, making a book is like building a house. So mm -hmm. you start with the fundamentals, that's the idea and so on, and uh, at, at, the, at the very end you think about the uh, the wall paint and uh, the facade mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, that's exactly as I'm doing the books make at first the, the construction then build it and at the very end you make the book cover and what do you say to people who just to play devil's advocate who say that it's outdated and why would you use paper and scissors and a glue stick when you can do it much quicker on a computer screen because when I put out all my prints on this table, you can see the connection between the image here and the image there. Mm -hmm. So then you start to do a dance, as I have learned, on this table. And it's amazing the connections that come out of the work. So yes, on the computer, I can say I'm making a book on portraits of Monty, and mm -hmm. that's what will come out. There'll be no surprise, there'll be nothing else that will emerge but look at this project i came here just to make a maquette now we have the maquette we have the reader we have the poster which is a new form for us to make books which all of this happens because we are dealing with the material in a physical way okay another advantage is um, so when you build the book at your laptop or computer and you see it on the screen you have always the beautiful backlight yes. and it's perfectly positioned mm -hmm. um, in, um, in an InDesign document and it looks from the beginning good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, the book dummy has a kind of imperfection. You turn over pages, um, just a slow movement into this direction with a reflective light and in the morning when the sun is rising it 
looks better than in the evening when it is getting dark. And then there are also this, uh, this little accidents. Uh, so maybe this was once glued together, but this is a beautiful page. Yeah, yeah. we should so, use this. Yeah, as, a, as a front end paper yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know? I've watched you make books for over <coughs> 10 years now. And for me, it's often, it looks like a form of play between the two of you. Mm. It doesn't look like a publisher and an artist. Is that something that you consciously mm. do or is it... Yeah, actually, when I'm working with Gerhard, I don't think of him as the publisher. I think of him as the conductor. And that I will make my little symphonies and I will put them out. And then he will come in and say, let's start here. <coughs> And he's generally right, but he also listens very well. So at first he always says, no, if I say, can I make a book with 88 covers? And he says, absolutely not. But now I know, I just leave it. And next morning and he comes and he says, okay, we try it. And then we do it. And it's a nightmare for him, but it's a dream come true for me. Thank you. I'm a pleasure. Finito? Yes. Good.